The patient is positioned prone onto jelly rolls and the head is secured in Mayfield pins. An incision is made from the C2 to T4 level. A standard posterior cervical midline exposure is performed. After the exposure, the spine is instrumented with cervical lateral mass screws and thoracic pedicle screws. Polyaxial screws are generally placed at two or three levels above and below the apex of the deformity. After instrumentation, a provisional rod is placed on one side. Then the osteotomies are carried out. If the correction is above C6, the foramen transversarium may be released to prevent kinking of the vertebral artery. The osteotomies begin with laminectomies and complete facetectomies at the apex of the deformity. The two cervical nerve roots at the apex of the deformity are identified and skeletonized. Next, the cervical pedicle is isolated bilaterally and removed with small rongeurs. A matchstick drill bit and sequential dilator taps are used to decancellate the cervical vertebral body to complete a 30 to 45 degree wedge in the cervical vertebral body. The lateral wall of the vertebral body is dissected free with a Penfield dissector. The lateral wall is removed with a rongeur. After completion of the osteotomy, the patient's Mayfield head holder is loosened from the table and the Mayfield head holder is used to slowly extend the head and close the osteotomy. Neuromonitoring is used during the osteotomy closure to ensure that spinal cord function is maintained. Final rods are placed and secured with set screws. An anterior decompression and fusion may be performed to remove any residual ventral compressive osteophytes or fill any ventral gap that may result from the osteotomy. Ventral bone graft lessens the chance for pseudoarthrosis. If the global sagittal balance is still abnormal after cervical kyphosis correction, a lumbar pedicle subtraction osteotomy may be necessary to restore overall sagittal alignment.